Singapore has come a long way in a half century. In the early 1960s, when it won independence, it was a sleepy Southeast Asian backwater. But it has become arguably the most economically successful microstate the world has seen since Venice in the 12th century. That can be put down largely to the iron will and charisma of its founding former Prime Minister, Lee Kuan Yew. The things that Singapore has done in terms of economy developing, having stability, uh, no coups, uh, all this growing maturity of our country has to be attributed to him as the leader of that generation. Today, Singapore is among the richest nations per capita in the world. That wasn't always the case. When Mr Lee was campaigning for Singapore to be part of the Malayan Federation in the early 1960s, the island had average per capita income of only 550 US dollars. Christopher Lim's story is typical of many of today's Singaporeans. I didn't have enough money to go to school. School fees were paid for. Um, I graduated from the University of Singapore. I had a decent job have a decent living with my wife as well now. That's what he means to me and I think to a lot of people at our generation. Lee Kuan Yew was more than the founder of modern Singapore. He was a statesman on a global scale. In his memoirs, he insisted that he didn't want to be remembered as a statesman, but that's likely not how it will be. Former US Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, for example, said that he had learned more from Lee Kuan Yew than any other world leader he'd met. Lee Kuan Yew's influence, of course, spread far and wide, including to the Middle East. Lodi Abilama is a Lebanese artist who is holding an exhibition here in Singapore to mark the 50th anniversary of the independence of Singapore. I found it strange because you don't see images of him so much, and you don't hear of street names of him, you don't hear of institutions that are named after him, and I later found out that there was something he consciously did, uh, and maybe it was a sign of his humility, really. I asked her how Lee Kuan Yew compares to current leaders in the Arab world. It's very familiar to the Arab world. Our leaders, they tend to be very passionate when they're making speeches and very firm. So people respond to that. But the difference between him and them is that he said things and he actually did them. And more importantly, he took responsibility. While Mr Lee was undeniably successful in turning Singapore into what it is today, he now faces challenges that are very different from those he tackled decades ago. Its open economy is vulnerable to weakness in the global economy. And the government has been trying to manage down the population's expectation of the roughly 6 to 7% growth seen in past years to about 2.9% this year. Um, so in a number of ways, I think that success is the key. Can, can that success continue without Lee Kuan Yew? And I think it can. Uh, the headwinds that we're facing are economic. Uh, there are different sectors that we're trying to get ahead. Uh, the global economy as a whole is not a good place to be right now. But it won't be because Lee Kuan Yew passes away. Uh, it will be Singapore will succeed or fail largely now because whether we as a society can cohere, can compete as the region itself rises. Singaporeans themselves are becoming more politically aware and regularly challenge the ruling party's policies on an increasingly vibrant social media. The government has become more responsive, but critics say that imagination, flexibility and strong leadership will be needed to manage Singapore through the next few years. Uh, it's a very serious question now in the media, what, what next? It's always what next? Um, Lee Kuan Yew has left us important lessons that we can bring, to the, bring forward. I think the biggest uh, thing that I would take from him is tenacity. We're going to think out of the box what is suitable for us in the future. That uh, we have to look at issues that um, as Singaporeans have to bring them out to discuss. Because we are a very small nation, we can't afford to make mistakes. The big challenge for the current government, headed by Mr Lee's eldest son, Lee Sien Lung, will be to come up with a kind of out-of-the-box thinking that will ensure Singapore's economic miracle survives for the coming decades. But it will also be to sell the proposition to an increasingly politicised population, which, while it respects what Lee Kuan Yew built, has its eyes firmly fixed to the future. Jeremy Grant, Financial Times, Singapore.